Hey guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today to have a discussion about Hogwarts houses. Now, over the years, everyone has just been so obsessed with figuring out what house they're in, especially if you're really into Harry Potter, it's just something that you need to know. I have struggled with what Hogwarts house I would be in for ever. I... <laughs> My, my journey is a long one, and I have finally come to realize I think I know where I truly belong, and I'll tell you about that at the end. And, but going back to the very beginning, time and release of the movies actually is when it really started to become something that I would actively think about. And you know, looking back on it, taking all of those magazine quizzes or talking with my friends and having them put me in to houses or whatever, we all wanted to be in either Gryffindor or Slytherin because those are the ones that we knew the most about. Those are the ones that we were very prominent in the books. And so if we were sorted into the other ones, like I was, we tended to ignore it and choose our own house. So for me, the magazine quizzes often sorted me, or almost always sorted me, into Hufflepuff. And that really bothered me for a long time, because I'm like, I don't know anything about this. And it's yellow. I hate the color yellow. And I didn't like that, even though that was 100% true. I, and going based off of my personality, that is technically still true. I was just a full-on closeted Hufflepuff for years. I was so adamant. I am Gryffindor. I want nothing to do with Slytherin. They're all evil, whatever, because that's the way they're written in the book. So we're led to think and believe that Gryffindor is the best house to be in. And me being the gullible child I was, felt that way too. And over the years, upon rereads and just finding out more about the houses, it's I've come to realize that all of them have value and all of them, we all have all of the houses in us. It's just some might be more prominent than others. And so I was, I identified hardcore as a Gryffindor for quite a long time. I, then, come high school, I identified in houses that I'd never really either considered or just seen in a different way. And so, because of that, because of my friends or people that I associated myself with, I started to look into the other houses more. And one of those houses was Slytherin. And I learned, the more I learned about Slytherin, the more interested I got. It was like, the one that people always seemed to put me in, or was there was a split between was Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. Now Ravenclaw I'd never really thought of before because I was like, that's always the smart house. I'm not smart. I'm not academically good that way. I'm a, more of a social being. And I just, I never understood why so many, put, so many people put me there. And it just, it was very interesting to me that that was something that happened. And then Pottermore came out. And when Pottermore came out, the first time I took the test, because I took it several times, I have several dis different accounts with Pottermore. So the first time I took it, I was put in Gryffindor. And I was like, wait, what? Because, you know, over the last couple of years, I'd started to identify with both Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. So that was very interesting. and. You know, I was like, okay, this is where Pottermore put me, but I don't know if I necessarily agree with it. And so I would talk to my friends in college about it, because Pottermore came out literally right as I was going into my freshman year of college. And they're like, you're more like Neville. You just, you got to grow into the house. And I'm like, yeah, maybe. And there were a few instances where I, I showed some Gryffindor characteristics, but for the most part, I just, it didn't fit. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna see if I can take it again. And then every quiz I took from that point on, I it was either a Hufflepuff or a Ravenclaw. And I took those quizzes that also showed that your percentage 
of how much house you were in, I literally tied for Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. And so for years, the last like eight years, maybe even a little bit longer, I was lost. I was like, I don't know where I fit. I don't know where I belong. I can see myself in all of the houses, but these two are the, probably the ones that fit me the best. I, and you know, even the, the sorting hat saying you can choose which house you're being in. I'm like, I like both of these equally. I literally cannot decide where I would fit. And so then I started to talk to more and more people and everyone just it was a constant split between my friends, too. Half of them put me in Hufflepuff, the other half put me in Ravenclaw. I'm like, I still have no idea where I belong. And because I had that constant struggle, I was just like, bruh, I am having an identity crisis here, and I don't know what to do about it. So because of that, I was just like, you know what? I accept my hat stall status, but then I also started to realize that depending on the time of year and what was happening in my life, I would identify with one house and then I would morph. Because I mean, that's another thing I've thought about. I'm like, I wonder if your house changes over time. Because I come to realize that as a kid, I was this closeted Hufflepuff. I was like, hmm, but I don't know if I necessarily fit there anymore because of A, B, and C reasons. So. Maybe I'm more of this. And even that changed. So I still really didn't know where I'd fit. Friends was answering an anonymous ask about Hogwarts houses. And she made a point of saying something that really resonated with me. It's not about what you are and what you embody. It's more about what you admire and what you want to be. And when I sat back, I was like, okay, that's interesting. And someone followed up that ask by saying, well, what's your evidence for that? What's your reasoning behind that? And it's actually a canon. If you look in the book, particularly in the first book, and you look at characters like Hermione and Neville, they didn't embody Gryffindor characteristics. They didn't, that wasn't their personality. It was something that they chose. Hermione was probably more personality-wise fit for a Ravenclaw, but because she admired bravery and friendship and loyalty, and she aspired to be that, she was put into Gryffindor. Neville is dead set on being a Hufflepuff. He's like, I'm a Hufflepuff, period. And the hat was like, oh, well, no, but you, you're going to go in a Gryffindor. Like, that's the thing. It's like you value this stuff, but you don't think you can live up to what your parents were. So it's like inside, it's like, I want to be these things, but I'm not those things. So put me here. And just the, that, I, that thought, that idea really sparked with me. And so... If you really sit, if I'm really going to sit back and look at this, I am probably more of a Ravenclaw because of these reasons. So while I may embody the entire personality and the values of a Hufflepuff, I'm very family and friend oriented, I'm a hard worker. I have a deep love of animals and food and music. I am basically a hobbit in personality. Because even though I admire Hufflepuff traits, I embody them. However, I really always, and I mean always, looked up to and admired people who were knowledgeable and witty and creative because they are something that I've always wanted to be. I am creative in certain ways. As in, I'm a musician. I am not a very artistic person. I write a bit. I have kind of grown into that aspect. It's not something that was 
innately part of my being. It's something that I learned. And that's something else that I want to touch on in a little bit. But another reason I'm a Ravenclaw is over the years I've learned to be witty. I've learned to be have this snarky attitude. It's not something that I embodied. I learned it from growing up around my parents and around certain people. And having that, those experiences really shaped that part of me that's now become such a huge part of my personality. Third, in terms of learning, I love learning. I could care less about the actual grade. Love getting to experience new things and travel new places and I'm like a sponge. Once I'll just, I'll, I absorb a lot of different things and I'm incredibly knowledgeable. Um, so I have a lot of knowledge in different ways. It's not knowledge to ace tests and things like that, but people like me who really look up to that and admire that, it's, it's a difference in our values and our aspirations. You know, really thinking about it, that's what the house system is all about. It's all about where would you be placed best, where, where, where do you fit best so you can grow into what you want to become. While I embody the traits and personalities and a lot of the values of Hufflepuff, my aspirations and my admirations are very Ravenclaw based. So that's probably where I fit and that's kind of what I've been telling people more the last month or so because of this new revelation and and I don't know what are your, what are your, some of your thoughts on it do you believe that the Hogwarts houses are based more on personality based on traits or based on what you admire and if so why do you think that and I don't know, just give me your thoughts. I, this is something that I've had circling in my head for years. So I'd love to talk to anybody about this to get different insights and uh, see what you've got to say about it. But other than that, that's pretty much all I've got for you today. So as always, feel free to comment or find me on social media and I'll come back with another video for you guys soon. Okay, bye.